Okay, so we're talking about ionic bonds. Uh, you got to remember, ions are atoms with a positive or negative charge. So you remember that we talked about this a little bit over the last few units. We've talked about this over and over and over again. So we create ions by either losing or gaining electrons. So this is also called uh, reduction slash oxidation. So when you lose an electron, it becomes an oxidation number. So remember, valence electrons determine, your chemical properties determine how they are going to interact with other elements determine how many electrons are on the outermost shell. So if we look at a group like one, we know that group one is going to have something more like one valence electrons. So remember the rule that I said before. Our goal is to find the easiest way to count to eight. So remember one has one, two has two, 13 has three, 14, four, 15, five, 16, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8. Uh, The octate rule. So remember, we talked about how we have a certain amount. So octate, meaning that we're getting to 8 or getting to the noble gases. So if we have something like lithium, which is in group 1, or, and only has one valence electron, is it easier to lose one or to gain seven? And remember, it's the path of least resistance. So you are going to lose one before you gain seven. And then the opposite is true amongst the other side of the thing. But we're, when we lose that electron, we create a positive charged ion. Remember, I positively hate cats. So cat ions are formed when we lose an electron. Remember, losing is a positive thing in this case because an electron and a proton together equal a, a neutral charge. So if we get if we have more protons than electrons, we're of course going to have a positive charge because protons are positive. Now, formation of cations are going to have a specific name. That means that we are talking about our name of our ion now that it is an ion. So once you are a cation, it's just named sodium cation. Pretty simple. You just add cation to the end. It's not any of the special naming rules. Now, anions are going to be a little bit different. Remember, anions are negative. Negative means that you have more electrons than not. So that means you are gaining electrons. So remember, so oxygen has six. <coughs> Bless me. Six electrons, on uh, valence electrons. So is it easier for it to lose all six or to gain two? And, of course, that means gaining two. Because it's much easier to gain two than the energy to burn off six. Uh, remember, now an anion, when we name it, is always going to be negative, And it always is going to end in I. So anions are a little bit different than cations. Anions have end in I. Uh, think of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, of course, is going to be our... Sodium, cation, and chloride, or anion, combine together to create table salt. So that's how we name it. Um, remember, compounds are composed of two or more elements together. So ionic compounds are when we have cations and anions that attract and combine. Now, the majority of the time when we talk about ionic bonds, it is going to be between a cation in groups one and two and a anion in groups 16 and 17 because those are the most attractive forces when it comes to having an ionic compound uh, now thir group 13 and group 15 will also have ionic compounds but you are going to see it more often than not in our 16 17 1 and 2 ionic compounds will create a neutral charge so that means that you will have a plus and a minus that cancel out so if we look at this, we see that the sodium chloride that I was talking about earlier are going to attract one another because a positive and negative force attract, just like our magnets do. So they're almost like they are attracted to each other through magnetism or ionization energy or electronegativity. These are all things that cause a, 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 an attraction. So a plus and a minus are going to cancel out evenly and create 
in ACL. There is no need for a bonus. Now, that being said, If we have something like magnesium chloride, we may have a number. So this is called a, we can use what we call the crisscross method. So magnesium is going to be a two plus and chloride is going to be one minus. So we need two chlorides to balance our one magnesium. So that means we just take the two positive and put it down here to where the CL is and that will create our magnesium chloride, which is where we get that extra two at. Uh, see, magnesium bromide, you're going to have magnesium has a plus two. Bromine, or bromide in this case, has a minus one. So you will need to crisscross methods. So you will take the two, put it at the bottom over here. And the one, technically, you're putting at the bottom of magnesium. And that creates what we're looking for. Now, crisscross method, you have sodium sulfide right there. You take your two, you move it over that way, and the opposite is true for the other way. So we take when we are doing ionic compounds, it is easy to use the crisscross method. Now, you can use the Lewis dot structure like we did last time to do this. You just have to realize that they are donating electrons, and it is not sharing electrons. That is how covalent bonds work, and we'll talk about covalent bonds next week. So calcium bromide is going to be CaBr2 and sodium sulfide, because sulf sulfide is a minus 2 charge, is going to be Na2S. So the property of ionic compounds, they're going to be solid at room temperature. They have a very high melting point, because think about it. Have you ever seen salt melt? It takes a very, very high molten uh, temperature to melt salt. Uh, they can also be get a very good conductor of electricity when dissolved or melted. Now, metallic bonds. Metallic bonds consist of attraction of free-floating valence electrons around a positive metal ion. So that means we're talking about, instead of ionic compounds where they share them, it's more like a sea of electrons. Electrons become very mobile in this area. So they're very conduct good conductors of electricity because of this. Because they enter on one end and the same amount and in, same amount of exit on the other end. So they're going to have the same amount of electrons on both sides. Uh, they are very malleable and ductile. And you know how metal can be shaped depending on what it is. And atoms are arranged in a compact, orderly fashion, meaning that you're going to have some sort of strength behind it. So alloys are actually mixtures. So I think about the Bronze Age. When you take those metals and you melt them and cool them together, they do not combine. And they, they just mix together in a way. So that means it still creates a stronger bond than what was there before. And if you put in carbon, it can create an even stronger bond. So, for instance, if we look at sterling silver, it's mostly silver, but there is copper inside of it. It makes it harder. And then you can take bronze, like I was saying before, take copper and tin together, and that creates a much harder thing than what you were using before with iron. So iron would be more like a blunt object, and now bronze is much sharper, and you're able to cut through where you have the bronze age. Uh, stainless steel, of course, we take our copper and our nickel and our iron, together with chromium and we have this very strong stainless steel so it's much stronger than what was there before and just the iron and now cast iron is going to contain carbon because it's easier to cast so you have substitutional alloys and you have interstitial alloys so this means that you are looking similar size to the atoms that are that are replaced so that means substitutional that means you can substitute one for the other now the other one we're talking about a different size atom so smaller ions fill the inner spaces between the atoms so why is met metal ductile and ionic compounds not because metal has a sea of electrons 
So these electrons make it easier to move this object around into the shape that you want. So the sea of electrons creates this com combining effect without necessarily changing the chemical makeup of the metal. You create an alloy, which is a mixture instead of this um, new substance in an ionic compound, if that makes sense. All right, that's it for today. Good luck. I hope you do well on this Ed Puzzle and the rest of the week. That's it.